most AFL clubs uh, got back to work today, certainly for their first two five-year players. And a couple of senior players, particularly those at uh, lesser performing clubs, jumped uh, in as well and did some laps. So uh, we're off and running. And uh, all of a sudden, the conversation will talk will turn to mm. the time clock. Uh, PBs over the 2K time trial, vertical leaps, etc. Never been fitter, never been stronger, right. never been faster. No one's lost the game yet. Uh, it's, it is the, I reckon it's the best time of year because everyone's optimistic. Now, the, the review dropped when I was away. We've been yep. waiting for this review because they said after they sat, Brett Ratner would be released within days. It, it struck me, look, I thought it was vague, and I suspect that was to uh, protect the reputation of Brett Ratner, although reading between the lines, it was pretty scathing on him. I was interested in the fact long ago that David Noble was on the panel that ultimately decided to sack Brett Ratton, which was interesting in itself considering Noble had just been sacked and his record of 5-32 and 32 at North. And then I read that North Melbourne boss Glenn Luff conducted a review of the playing list and the list management performance. We know what happened to Luffy partway through the year. So those two things struck me as strange. I, it's like getting Jordan Ngoi to review your professional standards at the footy club or getting Gold Coast to review your, your salary cap performance. I thought that was strange. But to get to the review, they strike me as a club that doesn't exactly know where they are. Why is that, Kate? Okay? Well, I think it's really important to know where you are. So they've said when Brett Radden was sacked that essentially they have underperformed on the list that they've got and they need to perform better. But in the review findings, they've essentially prefaced their fans to say they need to put in place a program and a game plan that is going to be sustainable. And that may not happen automatically. So so what are, they? What are St Kilda? Are they going to take a step back to go forward? Or are, have they made the decision to sack Brett Ratton to immediately get out of that six to 10 zone and get from one to five, like they said when they sacked him? I just don't know that they know where they are. Because if you do, and if you are taking a step back, you don't go and get Jordan Ngoi, and you, you may not move on the coach and go for a Ross Lyon type. You might go for a younger coach. But do you think St Kilda and their fans know where they are in the race for the premiership? I think they've got a pretty good handle on it. I've got to say, I read it with interest, and I said last week that uh, they were pretty blunt and they were honest in that they may go back. But uh, when you've got too many, when you've got moving parts that are different, it's almost impossible to know you know, how far forward you can go. So you've got to cover both ends. But I think what they did say was they're open to improvement. They're hoping for improvement under Ross. I think they pretty clearly think that they haven't got enough talent to go all the way. And that's, a, uh, and that's in my view, uh, the number one thing you have to ask yourself. Have we got mm. a list mm. and a coach that collectively, if everything goes right, we can go all the way? And I think they clearly think the answer is no. And so they're going to go back to the draft. Uh, on Glenn Luff, I think uh, Luffy, as much as anybody I know in the game, would have uh, as good a handle on putting uh, assessing a list. So I think that that's not a bad uh, option. You can argue all you like about his contribution at North Melbourne, but to ask somebody to do an assessment of a list, he is somebody that uh, I've always uh, seen as an A grader, if you like. Very few uh, have as much uh, capacity to assess. Um so I think collectively, I think they know where they're at. They've uh, mm. they've got a lot a lot of things to go right to a make finals. Haven't made it for a couple of years, and they've got a lot of things that could go wrong, which uh, may delay them for a period of time. So where do, so ask yourself as a as a footy fan, where do you think your club sits? I, I I know that Carlton think they can win it. I know that Collingwood think they can win it. I know that Hawthorne know that they're miles off it. And I probably think the same of the Giants and and Adelaide and others. But they, those clubs at least know where they are. My opinion difference to yours, Jared, but I'm interested in your thoughts out there. You can text us, you can call us, 0433 98 11 16 is the Temper text or the Harcourt's open line is 1300 736 736. Will Ashcroft is the, uh, well, we think he's going to be the number one draft pick uh, coming up in a week or so's time. He joins us in the studio. Uh, great to have you in, Will. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It's been uh, it's been a, uh, a big build up. How are you dealing with the pressure? I'm in a pretty privileged position knowing that I'm going to Brisbane, so um, I feel a little bit bad for my mates so yep. <laughs> waiting up right up into the draft to sort of know where they're going. So, um, yeah, the pressure will always be there, I guess, in a high-pressure environment like the AFL, so um, just sort of taking it in my stride and, and embracing it. Do you think that you'll be nominated as number one by the Giants? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm hopeful, but um, I guess all AFL clubs uh, have their own agendas and, and want to do what's best for their club, and I respect that, but uh, I guess I've sort of just done 
everything in my power this year to prepare myself the best and, and be the best player in person. So um, I've sort of done everything I can and um, yeah, it's up to other clubs to sort of decide what's best for their footy club. So is that important to you, Will, to be the number one and the first player called next Monday night? Uh, it'd be nice, but I don't think uh, it's a be-all end-all for me. I've sort of said that across the year. Um, I think I've, I've potentially done enough to be uh, in that position, but if it doesn't happen, then, um, yeah, as I said, AFL clubs have to do what they have to do to um, yeah, push them forward. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that I'm going to Brisbane and um, just really looking forward to starting the pre-season, um, to be honest. You mentioned you're in a privileged position. How much communication and contact have you had with the Lions this year or have they largely left you to your own devices to get everything in order um, that you needed to in your uh, personal and schooling life? No, they've been really good. I think um, they've had a little bit of impact and um, yeah, sort of, but sort of held off a little bit to make me allow me to make my own decision. Um, I only made it probably halfway through the season. So I was, I was lucky enough to train with them last pre-season and get it pretty much an AFL pre-season under my belt, which was uh, I was very grateful for. And then, um, yeah, now sort of I've made the decision. I spent a week up there a couple of weeks ago now and um, sort of saw the new facility and, and met a lot of the coaches or saw a lot of the coaches and, and players again. So um, they've been really respectful across the whole process. What's your hopes for uh, the Lions next year? All of a sudden you've got a couple of other midfielders uh, joining the gang. Yeah, they are they're looking very good. I think, um, yeah, Dunkley, Gunston, um, Jasper Fletcher, another draftee. Um, just to name a couple. So, yeah, they're looking really good. It's going to be a very competitive side to sort of get into, which is, which is nice. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to the challenge individually. And, um, yeah, it's just an awesome club to be a part of and, and really looking forward to it. So we're hearing you're going to make an instant impact, which is great. Yeah. Whose spot are you going to take? <laughs> um, well, that's up for fakes to decide, I think. But, um, no, nah, I'm just looking to put my best foot forward and, um, yeah, hopefully hopefully that can start uh, as, as soon as, it, as I possibly can. And when do you head up? Uh, a couple of days after the draft, so yeah, a bit of media and stuff a couple of days after and yep. then sort of straight into it, which I'm keen to. Do you feel there's pressure on being number one? Because you may be nominated as number one. I mean, the Giants may nominate you uh, just to make Brisbane pay a few more points. Uh, but there's still another view that they may elect to keep the number one nomination and uh, be able to promote the fact that they've got the number one player around the country or around New South Wales, which I'm not sure I'm a, a huge supporter of, given the pressure it can build. Yeah, it's, there's definitely a lot of uh, pressure um, around the number one draft pick. But um, as I sort of mentioned before, I'm just embracing the pressure that's going to come with it. And um, if it's one or, or after that, then uh, nothing will change in my process. So, um, yeah, I'm just, no, yeah, no matter where I fall, I'm just looking to prepare myself to um, sort of come in and, and do the best I can from, from day one. Every elite player in the competition has has a weapon. Now, we read about you, ball magnet, um, essentially can play inside, outside, midfield. But in your eyes, what is your biggest strength as a player? What's going to be your weapon? I think um, I think just my burst away from the contest, I think I've really developed that and, and transformed that into a strength. Um, yeah, like my contested games, um, I think, yeah, pretty good. And, and there's, there's areas I can work on there, but I think... Um, yeah, where I think I can sort of separate myself from others is, is yeah, just the, the speed away from the contest. Who's got the best burst away from the from the uh, stoppage at the moment in the game? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot of good players. I think <laughs> someone who's emerged, Chad Warner. I've started Warner to be one. Look, mm. look at a bit of his uh, his vision. He's been incredible from that aspect. Um, so he, he's definitely one. Oliver. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty, certainly built it yeah, that in. He definitely. used to be a quick hands man, but yep. uh, now he looks like he's getting on his bike. So. It can be trained, which is the, the, the great thing about it. Were you, were you as a kid a burster or were you a first possession giver? I try to keep balance between the two and, and just sort of read the game as it comes. Um, I've always been pretty quick and, and tried to keep developing that uh, as I go, but uh, there's also a time and a place to, to give the handball off into someone into a better position. So, yeah, a bit of both. Such an important draft for, for a lot of clubs. So take yourself out of it. If you were selecting with pick one in the draft and, and once again, take yourself out of it, who would you pick? Who's the best player that you've played alongside of or against this year? Yeah, I'm probably a little bit biased, but Harry Sheasel, who I've played with a lot this year in, in Sandy Dragons, uh, Vic Metro and, and the Australian Academy. So I think just seeing what he does firsthand uh, in games and, and at training and, and what he's like off the field as well. He's, he's an incredible player in person. So um, yeah, he's going to do a lot of great things in the league. Your players come in and you, you want to find your feet, you want to earn the respect of your teammates, get a game, experience that. Very few come in with a desire to win a premiership straight away. I reckon maybe Selwood, I've, I've seen it from, and maybe a handful of others. Now, you weren't born when Brisbane won their last premiership, which your dad played you know, in, in 2003, one of his three. 
Does the premiership drive you yet, or for you, are your goals about doing what I said uh, moments ago, earning the respect and getting a game and finding your feet, or is it premiership success that drives you now? No, definitely early on, just thinking about the first day, um, how, how, how I'm going to earn my respect and my coaches and my teammates, and, and just taking it day by day, week by week, and, and sort of building on it. Um, I think, yeah, obviously the Lions are probably in the premiership window, and, mm. and I've brought in a lot of great players, and are looking pretty good over the last couple of years, so... Um, I think, yeah, it sort of looms there a little bit, but uh, for me personally, coming in, I haven't yeah, haven't played an AFL game yet, so I wouldn't be looking ahead to that. I'd mm-hmm. just be thinking about, yeah, coming in um, and doing all the right things and, and then hopefully getting a game and going from there. You had uh, obviously the choice to go north or you could put yourself into the draft. One of the issues bubbling around uh, the draft at the present time is whether or not first or draftees should sign more than a two-year contract basically to tie them to a club for, say, three to four years, which the Players Association have railed against. I can see a lot of positives in it. Um, what's your thoughts on it? If you had to sign one, you'd have to sign it. But if you were advising, would you, would you see it as a major negative? Me personally, I did I did sign the four years, so I, I probably I speak um, positively of it. Yep. Um, and I think, yeah, if, if it's a hard one to sort of say because there's, there's kids who go into state and sort of have that, only natural urge of, oh, it's going to be pretty difficult to sort of sign the four years and uh, move away from home definitely for four years. I, I can understand that to, to an extent. Um, but on the flip side, there's you're securing yourself for four years and you should be pretty happy that you're going to play uh, and be a part of an AFL club for four years. So. I know tennis and footy are different because footy is played in Victoria and you can always come home. But if you, were, if you grew up and your, your dad actually was a – or your mum was a fam- famous tennis player and you had the same – uh, the, the same capacity to have the father son or the mother son, and you're a brilliant tennis player. Yeah, I mean you'd be leaving the, you'd be leaving home at basically 12 years of age for uh, periods yeah. of time. So it's this sort of luxury that we, yeah. I think, uh, fall back on in many ways, rather yeah. than saying I'm a professional sports person, yeah. I go where I have to go. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways of looking at it, and um, that's a very good point. So, yeah. Will, uh, as an 18 year old, you couldn't be more impressive. But uh, just to you know solidify that, you've launched your own business. Tell us about Wash Performance and Wellbeing. Yeah, so it's a, sort of trying to drive a bit of a program or a community, um, to, just um, sort of give back to the community. I guess I sort of I've grown up uh, in a privileged position with, with dad being in an AFL club and obviously playing AFL, so having a lot of experience. And he's passed on as well as my mum a lot of knowledge. Uh, about the game and, and about being a great person and, and, and sort of inspiring the next generation. So I thought, um, yeah, I've been working on this for a couple of years now to sort of give younger kids guidance around um, training, positive habits, um, nutrition, um, life balance, things like that to sort of, um, yeah, sort of propel them to so they can achieve their dreams as well. So it's an app, is it? Yeah, so it'll be a website at the start and I'll run a lot of stuff through social media and, and the website and I'll have a YouTube channel as well and then potentially develop that into an app over the coming years. Well, you can follow Will on his social media and wash performance and wellbeing if you want to check that out, Jared. Indeed, I haven't had a look at it, but uh, I'll get on and, uh, and follow that one. You've got another father-son also that you're about to um, hopefully have a decade of success with. Uh, do you know Jasper Fletcher well? Yeah, I know him really well. I played a lot of footy with him when I was back in Queensland, played with and against him in the Queensland rep sides. And, um, yeah, I know yeah, he's, he's an awesome guy and... Um, yeah, he trained at the Lions last year as well in the preseason. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to sort of seeing him a lot more regularly and um, training alongside him. He's a great, great fellow and great player. Anything special planned for draft night after your name's called out? Uh, I think whispers are that the club takes you out. So hopefully they, um, <laughs> yeah, give, give me a nice dinner or something. But um, now I'll, I'll celebrate with my family and, and my friends. A couple of friends are coming along, which is. Um, which is nice. So yeah. Do you like it divided in two? Um, because yeah, I, it's a yeah. fair bit of disappointment uh, for yeah. those who are on the cusp. Yeah. On uh, night one, and then all of a sudden they're left for night two. Yeah, it's not great for the players. I think. I think. I think. Well, I've experienced. Probably haven't experienced it like others, but everyone's sort of been waiting so long to find out where they're going or if they're going to go, um, and then sort of to have to wait another light, another night um, can sort of yeah a little bit of a negative for, for players, but I think it, it's good for, for good for the game and um, TV and things like that. Well, it's been great having you in, uh, Will. We wish you well. It's a, it's a big night coming up. Uh, you're a decorated uh, player already, and let's hope uh, in the juniors, let's hope uh, you can build that career and uh, 
we're celebrating you uh, in about 15 years' time uh, as a Hall of Famer. Thanks, Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Kane. Appreciate it.